Hi, I'm Corinne Spencer. I'm an AMI trained 6 to 12 teacher, and today we're going to look a bit of, at the mathematics here in the elementary classroom. Dr. Montessori described all humans, including children, as having a mathematical mind. This is the idea that the human mind is naturally equipped to understand mathematics and is able to relate to the world in a mathematical way. Our roles as teachers is not to teach each individual subject within maths, but rather to prepare the environment so the children are able to make these mathematical discoveries for themselves. There are three components to support the development of the mathematical mind. Um, there are materials to make particular discoveries, there's activities that are supported by the application of mathematics, and there's the freedom to engage with these materials and activities as the children see fit. Certain materials are first presented in children's house, where the children explore sensorially. Once they're reintroduced in the second plane, here in elementary, they're able to use their newly developed reason and imagination to work further. Each material serves a purpose. Some serve the second plane characteristics, such as the gregarious instinct or strong imagination. Certain explorations, for example, long multiplication, can happen with more than one material, providing repetition with variety and helping a child along towards abstraction. Elementary children need repetition, just as the children's house child did too. They need it to master certain concepts. But the elementary children are more engaged when there's a variety here. Mathematical activities serve the child by letting them use their mathematical understanding in everyday tasks. For maths to be alive in the classroom, the children need to be doing. They need to be making things, doing things, moving around. Activities such as um, measuring a piece of finger knitting across the classroom or dividing the columns and rows for a class calendar. Perhaps telling time to record in their work journal, doubling or tripling recipes in cooking. These all bring mathematics to life for the children. For the children to benefit from these materials and activities, they also need freedom. The child must be free to choose, free to experiment, and free to repeat. These are the same freedoms we give children when they are learning to walk or even talk. Giving these freedoms allows for the child's natural mathematical development. By assigning maths with worksheets, forcing problems, requiring maths to be done before other work can be chosen, we're hindering that natural development. The teachers in the classroom have a responsibility to help the child remove any previous anxieties that may be surrounding mathematics. The elementary child has a reasoning mind that's capable of understanding that maths is expected of them, just as it's expected of all members of society. This is approached on an individual basis and with the utmost care and compassion. Mathematics is an important aspect of cosmic education, our plan for the elementary child. Mathematics is introduced with the great lesson called the story of our numbers. And in this story, mathematics is truly connected to history and was used by our early ancestors to meet their needs. They needed to solve problems and quantify things and maths helped make their world easier. We tell stories of many maths heroes, but we're sure to give credit to those unknown heroes who made discoveries too, just as the children will do in their own work. Maths is an opportunity for gratitude. We say thank you in the story to the Phoenicians for giving us the alphabet we use today. The children will carry this gratitude with them through their work and explorations and discoveries. They'll, they'll carry it with them through their time in the elementary classroom and on through the rest of their lives.